Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the AOE 3 Noob Cup 2, and welcome to our second semi-final series between Casper and Shaitan. We have Casper in the blue, playing as the Japanese, against Shaitan in the red, playing as the Italians. A very interesting matchup, of course, we have seen both of these civilizations from both players in the past. The Japanese... They have a very insular economy. That's one of the main features of them. We see they start the game with a cherry orchard. And I think that's very useful because it means that they get to harvest food throughout the early game right next to their town center. You don't need to worry about going out and hunting for deer and possibly getting caught out in early raids. You're able to keep your vills at home for that early eco, and that's really strong, I think. On top of that, and you can actually see... Gochi no Tajima, actually giving us an example of how the explorer can build the Japanese unique houses, which are shrines. They obviously give population, like a typical, you know, typical house. But the shrine also generates resources and will generate bonus resources if you have deer nearby. So we do have four deer living near the shrine, and therefore it is generating 0.36 wood per second. So I think the Japanese have a really nice early economy, defensive early economy. And we can see that uh, Kaspar has the same strategy with the Japanese this round as he did in his last battle against Hothir, uh, opening up with a consulate and picking up the Portuguese alliance right away. Meanwhile, over in the red, Shaitan playing as the Italians. The Italians start the game with a weaker economy, but they will get a villager. The Italians get a villager every time they research a new technology. So we see that not only are the Italians training a vill, but as soon as Placer Mines comes in, we'll see it right here, bada bing, bada boom, there's a vill right there. So the Italians have the ability to boom up and get a really solid economy going very quickly. And of course, you cannot ignore the architect, a special villager that builds slowly, but builds for free. So uh, I expect one of the most important things if you're playing the Italians, you want to keep this architect moving. You want to keep the architect producing more and more buildings, whether that's houses or, um, you know, basilicas or what have you, right? You, you want to keep the architect producing, and that's a, a great economic bonus. So both civs have some really strong economic options. I think one of the main things I will be looking for in this game is, you know, looking at the Japanese. The vills are rather safe, you know, it, 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 it's going to be hard to get vill picks without just destroying the town center. So I think early raids are difficult on Japan, but it is possible to knock out these shrines. You know, the shrines are out across the map. Uh, and, you know, they, they will be fairly easy to take down. So what she could do, get up an early army and, you know, you don't even need to fight for the town center. Just patrol the map and destroy a lot of shrines and impact the Japanese economy that way. That's something I'll be keeping an eye on. We find ourselves on the map Parallel Rivers. And we can see here that we have one native camp, the Zen Temple. The unit is the Sohe Naginata, a Japanese warrior monk armed with a Naginata, good against cavalry and buildings. So this is basically a, a special spearman unit, right? Tex, meritocracy, decreases unit cost upgrades. That's pretty nice. Meditation, giving your units 1,000, or giving you 1,000 experience points towards your next shipment. And then Master Lessons, Zen Master Lessons increase hand infantry attack. I think that will be particularly useful for the Japanese player, for Casper, if he decides to go Samurai. This would be a really nice pickup. Uh, of course, Meditation would be really nice. That'll just help you get more shipments faster. <clears throat> Let's take a look at their decks. Starting with Casper right here. And we see at the four and a half minute mark, both players on their way up to the second age. Casper shipping Medici. Uh, Picking up the Medici politician. Casper building the Shogunate wonder. Alright. 
Casper, once again with my favorite deck in the whole tournament, subscribe to Iron Kaiser. I mean, you know, I didn't say it, but while we're looking at this beautiful work of art, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment below about who you think is going to win this thing. We've seen Casper play before, we've seen Shaitan play before. Which player do you think, going through this set, has the better chance of pulling it off? And why? Casper hits the Commerce Age. And uh, looking at the deck, it looks like not a lot has changed from the last time. Uh, I do see we have a unit card, the five Yumi Archers, and we're, we've got one coming in right now. So we got a Yumi Archer card, as well as a bunch of buffs for the Yumi Archer. Uh, one for the Archer, one for the Ashikado Musketeer, one for the Samurai. All infantry building attack increase. So just looking at this Commerce Age deck right here, this seems to be very infantry focused. I'm expecting to see a lot of infantry coming out of Japan. Archers, Musketeers, Samurai, Siege. Yeah, this is just infantry. Going into the next age, buffs for Archers, buffs for the Musketeer, Samurai card, Flaming Arrow. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see a lot of infantry coming out of Japan. Meanwhile, Italy. Looks like Italy's going for a particularly defensive strategy. Three architects on the field right now. You know, interesting. I did not realize that architects could work on the same building together. I guess that makes sense, but I never thought you could do that. All right. So, architects focused in on a lot of outposts. Architects focused on building houses. I have read that a strategy that is becoming very popular online is the Italian Fast Industrial, where you just sit back and you use your architects to build a lot of free buildings, and you boom all the way up into the Fourth Age, and then build your army in the Fourth Age. I wonder if that's what we're going to see out of Shaitan. Let's take a look at this deck. This deck's called Milano, so we're thinking Milan here. It's picked up the Capitalism card, so we got a, a small trickle of coin enriching us through the game here. Monte di Bietta ships 700 coin into the Lombards. Sainese Financiers ships 1,000 food into the Lombards. I like it. I would have liked picking up Ufizi first, just so that you're actually generating experience points while your Lombards are working. I think that would be better to pick up before these, these two, but resources are resources. We do still have the Croatian Company card. Pavissier, Musketeer. Nice. And we do see an early army out for Italy. Ten Musketeer, five Pavissier. Casper, building some walls. Looks like Casper's also thinking about playing a more defensive game. Ten Archers, four Musketeer. Seems like they are pretty even as far as their early army goes. Italy has 25 vils. Japan has 30 vils. Japan, of course, also has the shrines going for them. But Italy has the Lombards. So I wouldn't say any player is really above and beyond when it comes to the economy right now. Rather than looking at the vil numbers, we can actually see how many resources are being gathered per minute. Let's see what we've got. Casper has 550, 200, 300. Shea has 570, 280, 600. So it seems to me like right now, Shea probably has a slightly stronger economy. And I believe that's because of the Lombards. So as soon as these Lombards eat up the deposited food, uh, I think Japan might actually have the advantage there. But right now it's really close. It's neck and neck. A lot of outposts going up for Shaitan. But right now, if anybody owns the map, it's Casper. Uh, just because we've got a lot of shrines out and about. Each one producing food. Yonda, nani, iyo. Ooh, a Basilica out now for the Italians. And Italy, 
on the way to the Third Age, picking up the Bishop, which, if I'm not mistaken, ships a covered wagon. So I think we're going to see a very strong economic focus for Italy here. Japan, also on the way to the Third Age, building the Toshogu Shrine, which we can tell gives you export when built and con constitutes two shrines, supporting 20 pop and generating a bunch of resources every second. It is kind of a shame that it's not being built next to a bunch of deer, but that's all right. It does also buff all of the other shrines on the map. So I think this will be a really nice economic pickup for Japan. <coughs> Put it put up. And here we go, the Ordnance Bestairo has been sent for Japan. Aha! Here we go. Italy, with first blood, putting some pressure on by destroying a couple of the shrines that we see coming out of Japan. And that was 0.41 foo, uh, wood per second uh, that just got knocked out for Japan. Hmm. There it is, sure enough, I was right. The bishop ships the covered wagon and that covered wagon, a second town center being built all the way up to the north. Rice patties coming up for Japan. So yeah, we're definitely seeing a focus on kind of an insular, more defensive uh, economy. I like the use of the walls. I, I wonder if Casper has Hoth here in the back of his mind. Uh, when he's building these walls and saying, you know, I, I really don't want to be pushed in again like last time with the Swedes. I want to make sure that I can hold uh, the line and keep my economy safe. Italy. Shipping the Lucan financiers. And, and with each and every one of these, I mean, these are essentially um, resource crates that are being shipped directly into the Lombards. They take more time to collect the resources because uh, it, it's faster for Vil to just pull resources out of a crate than it is for the Lombards to process uh, the deposited resources. However, these cars are really nice because they do ultimately give you more resources than just shipping, you know, 700 food or whatever, right? Pronto. Hussar, out and about. We have 22 Bivisier, two Falconets, and Hussar coming out. This is interesting. Casper researching some important technologies for his units, the disciplined Yumi Archer and the disciplined Naginata Rider. Do we see? Right now, the Pavissier are still in the second age. They're just regular. And sure enough, this is a fast in, uh, industrial age. Well, actually, no, this is a fast industrial for Japan. Japan go up to the fourth age with Great Buddha. Shea has not clicked yet, but I would not be surprised to see uh, with the resource buildup that he's got here. I would not be surprised to see an Imperial Age coming in soon for Italy. Now, what I'm worried about for Japan, we see that um, Japan, by the way, has since dropped their allies with Portugal and are picking up Dutch allies instead. Fourth Age. In for Japan. Naginata Riders are out on the field. 15 disciplined Yumi, 12 disciplined Ashigaru. What I'm concerned about. Ooh. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. We got a battle here. We got a battle.
These are veteran musketeer, and he is desperately trying to pull them back. Because as it is right now, they are... If he's not careful, they just get caught out. <clears throat> what I would have liked to see there... Remember that melee units can snare enemy units. So what that means is, is if a melee unit gets a hit off, then the enemy unit and units surrounding the enemy unit move slower. So what I would have done is taken one of these Naginata Riders and just walked up and hit the Musketeer. Now you may not want to stay in that fight because the Musketeer's melee does bonus damage against cavalry, right? But the Naginata getting that one hit off would have slowed the enemy infantry and would have allowed the archers to catch up and got even more shots off. Wow, a, a big wall. A massive wall coming in for Italy, trying to cut this map in half. Interesting. Both players staying really close to each other economically. Casper has 48 vils, Italy has 42 vils. Numbers look pretty similar so far. About, we got 850, 300, 600 for Italy versus 800, 350, and 78 for Japan. So the economies look pretty similar. If anything, right now, Italy is benefiting from a much stronger coin economy. But otherwise, it looks pretty even. And here we see a Dutch bank coming in for Japan. That will help with the coin production situation. Very nice. Neither player attacking right now. This is a very slow buildup. Both players are committed to uh, a big late game push, it looks like to me. And as I speak, these Musketeer are finally in trouble. Okay. The Italian Explorer, who looks like a Roman Centurion, one of those uh, joke explorers. The Roman Centurion goes down. Pepperoni! Pepperoni goes down! <clears throat> and uh, most of the Musketeer fall as well. So that, I think, is a nice pickup for Japan. What scares me from Casper's point of view? 36 Ashikara Musketeer, 24 to Yumi. I do not see any artillery yet for Japan. And Shay, again, fortunately for Casper, only has two falconets. Unfortunately for Casper, he has two falconets. And, uh, you know, if Japan is going to go very heavily into infantry and your opponent starts building up a lot of cannon, that would be a concern. That I would have. There's a there's a pretty big weakness in there. Now, so you want to use your Naginata. You want to make sure that they're alive uh, and that they can swarm and knock out these cannons first. If if Japan can knock out the Falconets quickly, then I think that the Ashigaru and the yeah Ordnance Bestero and the uh, disciplined Yumi archers they ought to be able to take out the Pavissier and the Dragoons. Especially because these Pavissier have not been upgraded yet. These are still Commerce Age level foot archers. We've got to see upgrades coming in for the Italians. Having said that, looking at the deck, the Robber Baron's card has been shipped, so uh, Italy getting a factory soon. This would be a really nice pickup. The Papal Company. Shipping a number of Papal Guards and Papal Bombards. That could be useful. And again, those Bombards in particular, I think would be very helpful. Uh, artillery is going to be really big for Italy in this fight, I think. Factory online. The Flaming Arrow. Cost and train time decrease. That would be nice. If Japan picks up artillery of their own, I think that would be good. Uh, flaming arrows in particular are also good anti-artillery artillery. So that would be useful in the coming battle. I 
I think it's so fascinating that what we've seen in the Noob Cup from a lot of the players so far has been uh, a focus on rush tactics. I think we've seen from most of the players... And I, I gotta stop talking because we have Morutar already on the field and knocking out these frontier outposts. This is going to encourage a response from Shaitan. Cavalry coming in. The Naginata moving in to attack the Dragoons. Now Dragoons beat Naginata. The Dragoon, the, the light cavalry beat heavy cavalry. But sheer numbers, not just of Naginata, but also of the backup from the, you know, the various archers and infantry, will knock out that cavalry very quickly. Mototarus are still on the field, and now Japan has begun the counterattack, running face first into Falconets. Fortunately, you see it. The question is how much damage can the Falconets do before they go down? One it has already fallen. The other one is down. We have 46 Ashigaru Musketeer. 23 Disciplined Yumi Archer. Up against 18 Guard of the Saglieri. 8 Dragoons. The Basaglieri are an amazing unit. They're only available in the 4th Age, but they are a very fast Italian skirmisher. So this is a great anti-infantry option. I am just concerned about the numbers. We're only down to 9 Guard Basaglieri now, and I think that might be not enough to push back this massive horde of Japan Japanese army. Papal bombards on the field, that might be enough. Oh, but wait a minute. He sees it. The Naginata Riders on their way to knock out these cannons. And I, I think the Italian army is split here. He needs to keep these cannons alive. And he has nothing protecting them. I see that fort, Casper says. Papal Bombards have a lot of HP. They have a damage resistance feature. So they stayed up a lot longer than they otherwise would have. But the cannons are down. Meanwhile, 15 Basaglieri still remain. They're doing a great job against the infantry. But as the Naginata Riders move in, the Pasaglieri are not equipped to handle fights against melee cavalry. They'll make sure work of this, and right now, Japan has the momentum. Meanwhile, in the background, Morutaru is putting in work, knocking out Lombards, knocking out Italian infrastructure. More Pasaglieri on the field. I think that those units would be great if Japan only had infantry, but as long as those Naginata Riders remain on the field, there's only so much Basaglieri can do. We do see five Hussar coming out. We see Culvern coming out. Culvern, of course, are anti-artillery artillery. They'll be great at knocking out the Morutaru if they can get there. This is the fort, Fort Gonzaga. This is the fort that uh, Casper was talking about. And this fort is massive for keeping Italy in this game. It is producing build, uh, units in the back, even as the main base is being flooded. Now, is that the only Lombard? I think this might be Italy's only Lombard. Now, I do not know, but it's possible if this Lombard goes down, the deposited resources might just be lost. I actually don't know what happens when your Lombard goes down. Both players remain even in their vill counts. 55 vills apiece. So as bad as this looks for Italy, this, this is not over for him. Not yet. Lombard goes down. Oh, wait, there's... Well, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, that was a different building. Lombard's still up. Italy, uh, trying to go for a counterattack, and I appreciate the concept. 
uh, oftentimes if you're fighting and, and you cannot win a straight fight, you need to open up a second line somewhere. Oh, this is nice. A defensive fortification coming up right in the middle of the Italian base. If it is allowed to go up, this would be very useful, but Japan is on it, knocks it down before it can ever go up. And that was, I do believe, a card that was sent. So that was essentially a wasted card right there. Italy down to 46 vils. Oh, and this factory. If a factory goes down, it cannot be rebuilt. And one of the main benefits of playing a European civilization is the existence of those factories. So if this factory goes down, that is a really big blow to Italy's long-term economy. Stable down. Factory down. And it's just a hard situation for the Italians to be in. Uh, what you have to do is you need to pull back, regroup, and get numbers again. You need a, a mass of army. Now, fortunately for Italy, Shaitan does have a second base here in the north. And if he's fast enough, he can rebuild his economy, get down some production buildings, and rebuild an army to repel the remaining Japanese invasion force. More Hussar. Really just not trying to make something happen, but the Japanese walls are doing their job. They're keeping raiders from coming in and, and secretly wiping out, you know, the Japanese economy. The walls are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Very well done there. Murataru now laying siege to Fort Gonzaga. If this fort goes down, then I think at that point, Japan is essentially pushed back into this final corner. And there's a last stand for the Italians. I do see Culverin coming out. There it is. Four Gonzaga goes down. And at this point, Casper undeniably has control over this match. The majority of the map is under the sway of Japanese Dominion. And it is an uphill climb for Shaitan to build an army to repel this. Let's get a look at some numbers real quick. Casper still has 11. This one, Yumi. 46 Ashigaru Musketeer. 9 Naginata Riders. A couple of Mortataru. And remember, with the most recent patch, mortars have been buffed. They do more damage to units, they do more damage to walls. And so, if the Mortataru get into position, they're already good at knocking out buildings. But they are particularly good at cracking through walls. I'd say Shaitan is in a lot of trouble. The Basilica, which produces experience points. It helps Italy get more cards, more shipments, goes down. There are still some mercenary cards in the deck that might be useful. But the problem is, yeah, we're, we're out of population space. We are low on wood. And of course, we don't actually have a card to send. So, this looks an awful lot like a last gasp for Italy here. Culverins may be helpful. Culverins are not bad against units. Uh, they are not the best against most units. The, you know, Falconets are better uh, in most situations. But, Culverins have range. And they're great anti-artillery artillery. So, if they can get in range of the Mortataru, they may be able to snipe them down pretty quickly. But it's not happening before the Mortataru destroy the walls. And 
Shaitan decides, I don't need to know how this goes. We, we all know how this is ending. I don't have the army to stop this. Shaitan calls the GG on game one. Casper taking the first match. Well done. Let's move on to game two. All right, guys. Here we are in game two. We've got Casper in the blue moving from playing the Japanese with a Portuguese ally to cutting out the middleman and going straight to Portugal itself. Casper in the blue playing as the Portuguese against Shaitan playing a new civilization for the new cup. In the red playing as the Germans. And this should be a lot of fun. Germany is one of my favorite civilizations in the game. Let's go ahead and talk about what makes them special. Starting off with Casper. Casper in the blue. The main feature we've got to watch out for for the Portuguese is that as they go up the ages, they get free town centers. So, especially if Casper's not pressured, there's a lot of potential there to build a really strong economy. We saw in the last match that both players tended to prefer a, uh, I don't want to say passive, but maybe a more defensive-minded, long-term economic focus. The Portuguese really play to that play style. So I think that that's really nice. What I will be looking for in this battle is, does Shaitan try to put on early pressure? Because that would be a weakness of the Portuguese. And speaking of which, the Germans are pretty good at making that happen. Their unique feature other than the existence of the Settler Wagon, which is a very effective resource gatherer. I want to say, let me, let's me let actually take a look here. This is 0.84 food per second for the regular Settler. Yeah. The Settler Wagon collecting 1.7. So that's more than double the regular Ville production, you know, resource gather rate. So you got the Settler Wagon, which is nice. But the other thing to keep in mind is starting in the Commerce Age, Every card that the Germans send also ships a number of Ulans, which is the German version of the Hussar. So you're able to collect this, for, you know, essentially for free. You're collecting a small cadre of uh, heavy cavalry that you can use to raid your opponent. You can use to supplement your army. There are a lot of possibilities that you get for having basically free army on the field. Right, And so that makes the Germans a very strong, interesting option. The map is Vistula Basin. And we see we've got some native camps in the field. Let's take a look. House of Vasa. Giving you the Royal Arquebusier, a Swedish skirmisher that can fight in the front lines thanks to its high hit points and melee damage. Let me go ahead and tell you, as someone who enjoys playing Germany, uh, the Royal Arquebusier is really nice. I think that would be a really good pickup because uh, you do get a very nice uh, skirmisher in the barracks, but it's not available until the third age. So having the Arquebusier in the second age is a nice pickup. You also have the Winged Hussar, a fast, heavy Polish elite cavalryman with extra attack range and a powerful winged lance charge. Now, I don't know the stats, but it sounds like that's a pretty formidable frontline unit. And one aspect of the Ulan is it moves quickly and it does a lot of damage, but it's not as durable as the regular Hussar. Uh, so Germany really lacks a frontline, beefy, um, you know, heavy cavalry unit. So it seems like the House of Vasa may be able to plug that gap with the Winged Hussar. That might be a nice pickup. Looking at the text here, we have Golden Liberty. All units cost 5% less coin. Yes. Yes, right away. That's... Get this. That's fantastic. Tar kilns. All units gain slightly more hit points, particularly warships. That's a nice pickup. Again, as I just mentioned, the Ulan is on the weaker side as far as its durability goes. So being able to help plug that gap with tar kilns would be really nice. Concerts. Ships a number of winged hussars and improves their charged ability. That's nice if you go with that unit. Hanseatic League. Ships a number of torp wagons, improving your economy. That's a good one. Order of Vasa. All gather rates increased. The bonus improves the longer you wait. I love this camp. I would love to see either civilization pick up this camp. Meanwhile, we also have the House of Vettin. 
The Trabant, a hand infantry with high HP that protects nearby allies by absorbing some of the inflicted damage. Okay, pretty great. That's a really nice frontline unit. The Saxon Crassier, heavy Saxon hand cav with high hit points and area damage. That sounds even better than the Winged Hussar. As far as for the Germans, just having a, a frontline cav unit to hold the line, really good pickup there. Leipzig Trade Fair, fully resets the market buy and sell rates. Okay, it might be useful in the long run. One thing that I think some players don't take advantage of, enough of, is actually using your market to buy and sell resources. If you're on top of things, you can use it in order to quickly uh, go up to the next age or to get out those units that you need. Don't forget your market. Let's take a second real quick. Let me, let me back up from the native camps to talk about the lay of the land here. As we see that Shaitan has a pretty significant point lead, and I think the reason for that is found in the economy. We've got 15 bills for the Germans, only 12 bills for the Portuguese. Uh, and we notice, what is, for the Portuguese, 300, 400, 0 versus 100, 300, 250, right? So I think that overall, the Germans do have the better economy, but the Portuguese are spreading out. Ah, uh, here we go, Ulans on the offense. Let's see how much damage those Ulans can do. But we do see that the Portuguese have taken over the trade routes. They have almost the entire road. We have a town center here, right in the middle of the base, setting up almost like a forward base for Portuguese aggression. And if we see, oh, look at this, look at this, the Ulans putting in work. I don't know if Casper even notices. Whoa, 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 and Portugal going on the offense. How much, how much damage can be done here? This is a, a really big moment. This is huge because right now Casper's got 17 bills. I'm sorry, Shaitana said Casper's down to five vills. Oh my goodness. Four vills. Casper does not have an economy right now. The question is going to be, will this push from the Portuguese deliver some kind of death blow to the Germans? If not, I dare say the game may be over. He's got to be careful with these Ulans. Do not fight the pikemen with Ulans. Don't fight the Musketeer with Ulans, but if you can go like into the back line and you know hit those crossbow, then that might be good. Yeah, here th this is, these Ulans are not long for this world. Let's look at the decks here. <coughs> now the Germans have already sent the eight crossbowman card, which is a shame, because that's what you want right now. A barracks coming up for Germany. Ah, here we go. All right, all right. Yes, it is. The crossbowmen have arrived. This is going to be huge. The crossbows need to focus the pikemen, need to focus the musketeers, in order to allow the uhlans to put in any work. Because as it is right now, these, these horses are just going down. I want to see... Uh, let me see. Well, Shea doesn't really have... All right, yeah, you, you've got to send the Doppel soldiers. I, I like this pickup. And one of the things I really like, meanwhile in the background, the Ulans. You know, just continuing to put pressure on Portugal. German TC goes down. And... If I'm correct, with that town center down, Germany does not have a way to ship in units. So now it's Germany's turn to take a bunch of damage here as Vils are falling. What needs to happen? Put some put some Vils on wood. You want to get another town center up. What an incredible match. I still don't know who's going to win this. I mean, I think right now, Portugal has military momentum, which I did not expect. I did not expect Portugal to fight in the Second Age.
but they have, they've, they've pushed in and knocked down the German town center, so that freezes the German economy. Why did you just stop right there? Uh, poor, he must see something. He must see Vils and think, you know what, I need to... Oh, he's going for the stable, okay. Interesting that Germany's decided to go on the offense to knock down this town center. Perhaps recognizing rightly that, you know, that, that, that he's done a lot of damage himself and maybe he's trying to even the odds here. Now the problem is, as Portugal, you get those free town centers. So even if this TC goes down, you still got this one producing bills. It's still 7 to 12 favoring Germany, but. Oh, what is this? More, more musketeer. Oh, my goodness. This has to be. This has to be. This has to be Casper's game. And look at this town center just melting. I mean, double soldiers, they have 60 siege damage with every shot. So just a couple of soldiers unopposed will knock down this town center. That is a really big pickup. Both players. All right, this is this is a very scrappy match. This is the kind of knockdown, drag out fight you love to see in a semifinal. I did not predict this at all. <laughs> now, what I don't like. All right, take a look at uh, Shay's situation here. He has twelve hundred food. You've got plenty of food. You don't need more food. What you need? Oh, oh, he sees it. Yeah, he, he's got to see it, right? Hello. This is, like, basically half of Shay's economy right here. Behind. Oh, wait! Wait, wait, wait! There's already a town center coming up! Oh, yes! Oh, Germany's still in this. Both players have nine villagers at the 12-minute mark. Ha, 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 ha! And there it is, okay. You now have a town center. And that means, well, I guess you gotta build a house. But, yeah. here we go, musketeer, uh, not musketeer, militiamen are out. We need houses. You need to throw down houses right away so that you can ship, you need to ship the Doppelsoldner card. ASAP. Yeah, unfortunately, this town center was discovered. And... Casper... Maybe has a weak economy, but has quite a few military units on the field. This town center is not garrisoned, so it's not firing back. So... <laughs> Meanwhile... Operation Get Wood to Build a Town Center in Your Enemy's Base is a go. I have got to admit, I have played so many games of Germany that have gone exactly like this, where um, you feel like you, you, you would have had something good happen if your Town Center could have just held. But, Shaitan, if we could rewind the clock... What we saw was he wasn't ready for that push on the town center. And the ga the Vils garrisoned in the TC were just not enough to knock out that early army. He had to scramble to build a barracks and then to actually get units out. And it was just too little too late. Auftrag? Now this is a big moment right here because... You know, you have this army, they're, they're moving into the middle of the base, 
they're figuring, hey, we, we might as well knock out Christine here. Top of the goes down. They need to they need to give a new um, icon to the Fraulein, who is uh, the German explorer here. Yeah, cords of wood and... Okay, so we're getting resource crates coming in for Germany. Meanwhile, Casper's in the Third Age. So we have somewhere around here a third town, a, a new town center. I don't think I even finished talking about Wetten. I might as well. I'll talk about Wetten in a second, but what we, what we see, a German economy trying to get kick-started up here in the north. Both players hovering around 10 vils at the 15 minute mark. This game is insane. So, let's see. Königstein ships a fort wagon. Also ships a battery tower wagon for each 10 minutes of game time passed. That's a typo, by the way. Battery tower wagon. A to A wagon. For each 10 minutes of game time pass, up to 30 minutes. Marriage politics. Age ups are 20% cheaper. Oh, that's a nice one. Royal Saxon Grenadier. Send one giant grenadier and grants a giant grenadier with all future shipments. So both of these are really nice pickups. But the thing is, too, that, that's... Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Yeah, the settler wagons were found. They go down. So this this northern economy, dead. These houses, gone. But in the south, we have an outpost. And that outpost has given, put Ulans on the field. I honestly think that's a little dangerous. I, I understand trying to put pressure on your opponent, but you sort of revealed that you have a base. You're kind of telling him where you are. Another town center coming up. What Germany is needing badly is to get into the Third Age and get out some of those skirmishers. Veteran skirmishers would be amazing right now. They're clearing up crossbows, pikemen, musketeer. If Germany can get to the Third Age, which it almost can. I mean, he's got, he has the food. He needs 200 more coin. Where did this keep coming from? <laughs> yeah. Portugal's over here like, why won't you die? All right, you, yeah, there it is. The Exiled Prince. I don't remember. Let's see. I'll take Casper's point of view here. Casper's no idea. The, the, this base is hidden. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. It is discovered. See? And now, the pikemen are on their way. See? Yeah, he knows. <coughs> now, what I need to see from Germany, the houses are good. We do want houses. But we've got to get a barracks up. Like, I, I want to see the, the skirmisher card immediately. As soon as... As soon as the upgrade comes in. So here we go. Germany now in the third age. Boom. Going with the Uhlans. I think that's a mistake. Why is that a mistake? Because skirmishers beat almost everything. There are a couple of... Well, no. Skirmishers beat Dragoons, too. Skirms beat everything that Portugal has in the field. Ulans lose to Pikemen. They lose to Musketeer. Shea calls the GG. Now, I, I, don't, I don't think that Germany could have pulled it off. I, I think that was game over at that point. But I think that would have been a good pickup, though. I think the skirmishers would have been the, the, the better choice on that one. So, wow. Well done, Casper. Going with a strategy that I think is opposite what you would expect from Portugal. I think typically you expect Portugal to go for a defensive play, an economic play. He decides, 
I'm going to put everything in on this H2 push. And both players aggressively raided each other, bringing their economies to the brink. But Casper ultimately using the power of the extra Portuguese TCs to bring himself back from that brink and push Shaitan over the edge. Casper takes game two, and with that, the semifinal series. Casper, very well done. Shaitan, thank you so much for playing. We have our two Noob Cup 2 finalists. So the next time we meet in the AOE 3 Noob Cup 2, we will be watching our finals and crowning a Noob Cup champion. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the games. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel, keep an eye peeled for our next set, which will be the Noob Cup Finals. I can guarantee you it is going to be a blast. Thanks so much for watching, guys. This is the Iron Kaiser, signing off.